Dancers with Films Festival talking about the new film, Heroes Don't Come Home. This provocative poster has me curious, and I'm so excited to talk to the cast and team behind this film. Hi, everybody. Hello. So what are your names, and what did you do on the film? I'm Jake Hulse, writer, director. And Kelly Henshaw, producer. Mike Haas, producer. Andrew Casanova, actor. Well, I have to say this poster is fascinating. It really encapsulates what the story is about. But for those who are not here in Hollywood at the Dances with the Films Festival, can you tell me about the movie and the inspiration behind it? Uh, well, what inspired us was 9-11, living through it, being a high school student and, and walking down the hallway, seeing those towers falling on those roller cart TVs. And it's a story about Ben and Tim, and they watch the World Trade Center collapse, and they know one of their fathers is inside. And so they kind of promise to join the Marines, and only one ends up going. And so the story's about this promise they make to join the Marines. It's a one goes, and, and when he comes back home, dealing with making that promise as a teenager, and then being a 30-year-old man when you had that friendship and how changed it is. Now, what was it like making the movie? I mean, I lived in D.C. at the time, at September 11th, and it was a major psychic break for all of us. Where were you? Were you here in L.A. or were you in New York? I was in Massachusetts, in the middle of a suburb, sitting in a high school classroom. Um, I also was in school at the time. Um, I was a little younger in middle school, but I still remember uh, watching all of our TVs in the room, said the same thing going on teacher running, all I remember is a teacher crying, running down the hallway outside the building and that, you know, scares you as a, a, young, a young child, so. Uh, I was in northern New Jersey and actually I lived uh, near a road called Skyline Lakes Drive and it kind of goes over a mountain and when you drive, I was in class at the time, but as the hours passing after it happened, when you drive over that mountain, you have a clear shot of the smokestacks and everything and it was pretty insane, pretty, pretty incredible. Uh, I was a teacher in a psychiatric unit at the time, and uh, I remember having to discuss it with the students, and it was tough. It was tough, yeah. Now, working on this film, because people still feel very raw about September 11th, what was it like casting people, explaining the, to them what you expected and how they were supposed to work on the film? I think we wanted to get people who believed in the story and who wanted to make sure that there was this living memory that we could create in this movie so that people can't forget what we went through and really get them thinking and get audiences thinking about why we should go to war and why we shouldn't. And I think that those people who were really attracted to that story, they came to us and we were able to make some, find some incredible talent as a result because they were attracted to it. Now I'm totally fascinated by this because with the new technologies as an independent film, did you use any of the crowdfunding or did you find private funders to help you bring your idea to the screen? Well, technically private funders. Uh, we, we funded it ourselves and through Kickstarter and Kickstarter was a huge help because it, it pulled our friends in and, and a family and it pulled in people who really liked the story and helped us make this project. And writing the film, how difficult was that? Because it still gets emotional when I see some of the images and I, I think about it. Uh, it's a hard story because it's a personal story and it's, it's really what, what I live through and it's what my friends live through and hearing their stories when they're coming back home from Afghanistan is, it's, it's difficult to watch them kind of even want to talk about it sometimes. And so I, I, it's, it's not the easiest thing to watch, but I think it's really important that we don't forget what we went through so that we don't make the same mistakes. And as a producer, what did you sort of make attract you to working on the film? Uh, well, when, like I mentioned before, I was in middle school when it was happening. So when you're that age, you don't really understand what's going on. Uh, so I resonated with his message that he wanted to make the film in order to show students and show kids who are younger what it felt like to be in that moment. The feeling that you had of not knowing what's going on and even the adults are panicking. His, his voice really helped me resonate towards the story, and I was, I was hooked from the beginning. And you. So <laughs> since you're in the film, what did you bring from your own personal experience to the character? That's an interesting question. Uh, without getting too sentimental, my mother passed away recently uh, before shooting the film. So it was very, not easy, that's a crappy word to say, but you know, it, it, that lingered throughout the shoot. And this story is so emotional, so that tied in 
immensely into creating this character. Um, not only that, it was talking to a lot of veterans that have been there, that have fought there, that have come back, you know, and talking about the ones that didn't come back and the ones that they knew, and their good times and their bad times, and hearing that from them really helped me get this character onto the screen, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, you're supposed to hold that. Sorry, no, 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 you got it, you got it, you got it. Um, I just think the heart of the story. I think it relates to anybody, the friendship, anybody can relate to friendship, uh, the state of the world today. I mean, I think internationally, not only in the U.S., but anybody can relate to war and what's happening out there. Um, I just think it's a story that could be as pertinent 20 years from now. So that's why I wanted to get behind it. Yeah. Now, where was the film uh, shot? All over the place. We shot in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Big Bend, Texas. I forget anywhere. I think. No. And middle of the country. Texas, because that's where you shot the. Um, yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> it was 110 degrees. Yes, it was very warm for sure. Now, is this the first uh, festival you have submitted the film to? Yeah, this is our world premiere. We're super excited and thankful for what Dances with Films does for new filmmakers. They give us an opportunity that you don't normally get. And so it is incredible. And they are, they put on a great show. Absolutely. They're, they've been wonderful ever since we came. And, you know, they're always thanking us for making the movie. But, you know, we wouldn't be here without them. And... What was it like submitting your film to the festival? This is the very first one you all have. Uh, kind of like it's kind of like that first college application. You know, you put it together and just like, oh, I hope so. And then when you get that that acceptance letter back, you just you do a dance in your house and no one's watching. It's it's, it's incredibly <laughs> exciting. But yeah, when I called up these guys, we were all really excited. It's pretty awkward actually. <laughs> it's not a talent I have. Now, since this is an independent film, that means everyone puts on different hats. What are the different hats that all of you put on? Executive producer, writer, director, editor. Actor. Oh, Actor. yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's yeah. got me on that one. Those would be my big ones. We did other things, but those were the big ones for me. I think being the graphic designer of this great poster is a really big one. I forgot about that one. You're right about that one. Um, I produced, I was location manager, craft services, uh, transportation, transportation. Uh, I think that's about it. Those were my primary roles. Uh, producer, visual effects, um, first AD, yeah, so. I'm a little more boring, actor and uh, slightly of a musician, uh, created the score for one of our first trailers, yeah. Oh, wow, that's really cool. Now, were there any uh, fight scenes that anyone get hurt? And how did you sort of choreograph, choreograph some of the scenes? That's a great question. Um, so the fight scenes these guys did, they're their own stunt doubles. And to choreograph it, we went down to Central Park, and we just kind of, like, figured it out. And we were we were trying to, okay, if he did this, what would you do? And they we acted it out in Central Park with people just walking by, like, what are those guys doing? And then <laughs> when we eventually did it, we did it in, in Massachusetts on a... On a abandoned road nobody got hurt these guys are troopers yeah. there was one moment where someone said I'm not throwing myself on the ground I said no, no no like this and I so I did it and he goes okay I respect that I'll do I'll do that now and so I had to get a little dirty but th these guys were awesome and they, they were up for pretty much anything so now what's it like since this is your first film correct what was it like taking it from I Dan your head to paper to film and everything in between um, there, was, there was one moment where what I'd written was being acted out in, in this uh, really climactic moment. And I remember turning to my producer and saying, like, it's, it's coming alive. It's happening right now. And it was just the coolest experience. But sitting in that theater and having just people come watch it, that's the thing we wanted to happen. That's going to be probably the, the, uh, the most exciting part about it. Now, what was the camera that you used? We used a Sony FS700 and a GoPro on a drone uh, for most of our filmmaking. Oh wow, now did you have to get any special permission with drone? Because I know some, pe some cities and municipals, municipal some cities and states and counties are not allowing people to use drones the way they used to because they go up so high, they go so low, they're looking in on people. Did you get any pushback? Well, I was right at the very beginning, so this was we started using that about two years ago before the FAA had clear rules, but we stayed within their suggested guidelines, but they hadn't even created the licensing part yet, so we kind of like squeaked in before all that, before drones were really huge. I mean, we were making the, the drone and putting a gimbal on ourselves, so we were a little bit earlier before we had to worry about those things. Now, we would have had to 
changed some things and adjusted it, but we still could have pulled it off. Now, if any of you could give advice to young filmmakers who also want to make their own movie, what would it, what would it be? I would say step one, just you know, take it in one day at a time. What are you going to do the next day? And just keep plugging away and find people who care about the story you want to tell and who are going to support you and, and make it happen because it's a ton of work. But if the people are there for you and propping you up, then all of you will get it done and, and be nice while you're doing it. <laughs> Be nice. That's the difficult part. <laughs> um, I would probably second the fact that you need to find a story um, and people that you work really well with. Um, you're human. There's going to be days where you, you just want to punch them in the mouth. <laughs> but for the most part, I mean, we have such a great crew, but I would tell someone, keep pushing. Wake up that next day, keep pushing. So. Absolutely. I think even from an early age, if kids want to do it, they could pick up a camera, most of their phones have cameras, practice, practice cutting scenes, you know, take time to just type things out and I mean, find people that like to do that as well and, you know, put something together. Uh, do your homework, watch movies, watch shows that you really love, that you love the feel of and that'll help you get that inspiration that you need. And uh, I love saying just love the struggle. There's gonna be times where you're like, this is not working or we're having issues. The more of the struggle, the more happy you're going to be when it's all said and done, when it all pays off, yeah. Well, I'm very excited about the film, and it is premiere June 8th, so it's coming on this coming Wednesday. So if someone's in Los Angeles slash Hollywood, make sure you grab a ticket for Dances with Films Festival. Mark on your calendar Wednesday, June 8th at 9.30 p.m. for The Heroes Don't Come Home. Will there be a Q&A after so that the attendees can talk to you all? I would love for yeah. them to come and ask questions. I, the whole purpose is to get people talking, so it would be great if people came out. So if someone wants to find the film, do you have a Twitter or website or Facebook that they can learn more about it? Yes, yeah, so we have a Facebook, the Heroes Don't Come Home film. Uh, we have a Twitter, HDCH film. Uh, we also have an Instagram, which is HDCH film as well. HeroesDon'tComeHome.com that sounds totally easy. Thank you. HeroesDon'tComeHome.com. This is Cherry. I'm at Dances with Film Festival talking to first time team behind Heroes Don't Come Home premiering here in Hollywood, California at Dances with Films Festival. <laughs>